I'm sorry, Ken. I'm afraid I can't do that. It was a bug, Ken. How many people do you think will get this reference, Ken? Greetings, Internet. Crazy Ken is back, and today we're going to have some fun with the Lassie Too Big. And guess what? You know, it wouldn't be a Crazy Ken episode without something getting damaged in the mail. Seriously, though, how many times will this happen to me? I need larger storage solutions for my Final Cut Scratch Discs without compromising speed, so I went with Array to Ray. But yeah, so is my luck. The package was damaged in the mail. And... Of course, the damaging occurred right here where there wasn't any bubble wrap. Two sides had bubble wrap, but the side that got hit, there was no bubble wrap. Makes no sense to me. Try to save the environment a little, I guess. But anyway, yeah, so we have some damage. I'm a little concerned about that. However, I think we'll survive. And here's why. If we open her up, Yes, you'll see that the tear actually did go all the way through, but on the inside, by the tear, there actually isn't even a small mark on the plastic bag, and there's no mark on the, uh, the aluminum finish or the aluminum casing, so I think we'll be fine. But, as I preach, get a warranty, and I got a warranty, so I do have a two-year square trade warranty on this bad boy. Because it's expensive, and I would like to be able to replace it without paying a deductible or buying the whole thing again. So let's take it out of the protective foam. Les voila, Hal's sister-in-law. So this is the La C Too Big. So this is a 6 terabyte RAID. So in here, we have little bays. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. Each bay has a 3 terabyte SATA hard disk drive. 7200 RPM. In the RAID 0 configuration, which we will be using this in, we can achieve about 360 megabytes per second transfer time, transfer speed, excuse me. So this uses Thunderbolt 2 to transfer the data, which is pretty fast. That can go up to a theoretical 20 gigabits per second. But with these being mechanical hard disks, you can get about, I would say, 180 megabytes per second with each, but with RAID 0, you will get about 360. RAID is Random Array of Independent Disks. RAID 0 is called striping, so what RAID 0 will do is it will take the two disks in here and kind of put them together. You know, they'll be morphed into one magical body. So they'll show up as one volume on the desktop, and it will show up as six terabytes. So two individual three terabyte disks will show up as one six terabyte volume, and because we're using two separate disks, we can get double the speed. So again, two disks become one, double the speed, double the storage into one volume. That is called RAID 0 or striping. However, there is a deadly caveat to this. If one hard drive goes boom, the other hard drive is virtually useless in terms of the logical configuration. So if something fails on one disk, the whole volume will be taken down with it. So that means I have double the speed, but double the possibility of hard drive failure. Now I've never had a hard drive fail on me ever and I don't want to start now. So you should always have your data backed up. How are we gonna do that? With this. Dun dun dun! We will be using this lovely Seagate expansion. Eight terabytes, that ought to be enough, right? So again, the RAID is six terabytes. So eight terabytes should be enough to back up the whole thing once it's full and then we have some overflow. I'm hoping I can set up just this hard drive to automatically back up a time machine to the RAID and then use my current time machine drive to back up all of my other hard disks. A lot of data transferring is also gonna take place in this episode. Isn't that exciting, watching data transfer? It's so cool. Before we get into the fun, let's look at what else we have in here. This looks like the power brick. Power cord. USB 3 cable. And an included Thunderbolt 2 cable. Very nice. So, hieroglyphs. Push. Do that, do that, do, do that. Okay, four steps. We can manage that, right, people? So I don't know if you can actually see this, but this Thunderbolt cable actually has like a really nice matte finish. <laughs> I, like, uh, I like black and I like matte. We're supposed to open up this secret door. 
That is a really nice chunk of metal. Now we must connect the power source. All right, the Thunderbolt 2 is connected. We have a new icon on our desktop, which is perfect. Lossy, six terabytes of six terabytes. So it looks like it's already in RAID 0. It is actually in RAID 0. There are some nice little lights on the side that show fast, safe, and JBOD. Fast is what I was talking about earlier. That's RAID 0, where you get double the speed, but if one drive goes, the whole thing goes. Safe is mirrored, where we get half the space and half the speed, but one disk is mirrored to the other, so if one goes, you have a direct backup. And then JBOD is just a bunch of disks. So that's just two three terabyte volumes that would show up if it was in JBOD mode. Now I know there's a, like a Lossy manager, like a desktop manager, so I'll probably have to download that uh, just to have a little extra support. But that was a pretty easy setup. Let's have some fun and run one of my favorite utilities, the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. So this is the first official stress test of my new RAID. We'll do a five gigabyte file on the Lossy here. It's read only. Are you sure? Oh, it is. Oh, son of a bitch. That's um, that's a problem. Is it NTFS or something? No, it's Mac OS Extended Journal, but it's read only. That added a new level of confusion to this entire thing. Can disk utility work with raids? Oh yeah, raid zero. It knows that it's a raid zero. Well, that's a start. Um, let's just format it. Great. All right. Cool. Um, that is not what I was expecting to happen. Okay, I'm a little confused now. Okay, so I know the Lossy too big is kind of, well, this particular one's kind of old because now we're on Thunderbolt 3 and all that good stuff. So I know links have a tendency to die, like this one. I click the software button and it just brings me to like a sales page to <laughs> buy something new, which uh, I already did. So um, yeah, if you could like help me out just a little bit. Let's see, what do we got? I don't know what private public is, but here's those backup tools we were looking at earlier. And this is what I was talking about earlier, the Lossy Desktop Manager. This should solve all of our problems. Okay, so public-private is actually an encryption tool, so we get free backup tools and encryption tools, plus the desktop manager. All right, that's good in my book. We may get back to that later. 43 megs of space, ooh, I don't know if I can swing that. You have to restart your computer. Okay, boom, restart. Move to trash. Okay, so I downloaded it, installed it, and it seems like it opened twice because it wants attention, okay. But that was pretty painless, right here. The first thing I see is a reformat button. Oh, it just brings us to disk utility. Uh, okay. Um, hey, 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 it's doing something. Sweet. Cool. That's exactly what I wanted. Status. Temperature. Normal. Fan. Okay. RAID 0, operational. Disk 1, okay. Disk 2, okay. Enabling alerts may affect the transfer rates of your device. For optimal transfer rates, please disable the alerts. And it's enabled by default. Well, okay, we'll test that. Okay, so... This is pretty nifty, if that's a word people say. I swear I'm from this century. Anyway, you can have up to five email addresses to receive automated notifications about your device, about temperature, disks, and fans. That's pretty cool. So if something goes to shit, it will just tell you. Okay, let's now run the Blackmagic disk speed test. And then once all this is squared away, we do the fun part rearranging all of the data on all of my other hard disks and transferring terabytes of data to this disk. It's gonna be fun. Kind of like watching paint dry, but actually more exciting, I think. Anyway, let's do the five gigabyte file. Select target, lossy, open, boom, run test. Right, we're getting about 270, 280, 290, 300, pushing 300. 304, nice, read. Looks like we're about 355. That's pretty good. And remember, this is two mechanical hard drives, but because of Thunderbolt 2 and RAID 0, that enables us to get pretty decent speeds. In fact, I think this is a little bit faster than my Thunderbolt 1 SSD. So it looks like 4K video at 25 FPS can read and write at the raw level. 10-bit YUV422, we start to choke a little bit, but last I checked, I don't really do anything with that. I mainly shoot at ProRes 422. Yeah, we should be good with this raid. Fan-flippantastic. That was painless. I just can't seem to get the 
the door back on, so I'll have to <laughs> figure that out. So it's pretty convenient, at least I think, that it is hardware raid. You don't have to worry about fiddling with that stuff inside of the software. Uh, but then again, this is my first raid product, so I really can't compare anything. I don't have a baseline. But the other thing that's cool is that this is actually dual Thunderbolt 2. So I have two ports that can transfer at 20 gigabits per second. So I think the vacant port can actually be used for daisy chaining. I'll have to test that later, but I think we can daisy chain with this thing. So that's pretty cool. Got, an, ooh, got a nice little breeze coming off the fan on the back there. <laughs> Just got the fan on the back so you can keep an eye on that. Okay, so I am now back in the office with the Lossy set up and hooked up to the MacBook Pro. Super duper. So it looks like... If my mouse is, there we go. <laughs> it looks like all of our volumes are here and the desktop manager is detecting not only my RAID but also my Porsche design disc because those are both La C products. So now we start the file transfers. Let's do the transfer to the RAID. So basically this RAID is just gonna be used as a Final Cut Pro scratch disc RAID. All of my Final Cut files will be on here. Right now they're on this much smaller SSD, which is nice for travel. And I actually have this SSD daisy chained to the bigger lossy, so that's really cool. So now let's start the first copy, boom. This copy should be rather fast because it's Thunderbolt to Thunderbolt. And one of the drives is an SSD, so hopefully we're not waiting too long. Right now we're looking at about 27 minutes, 24, it's going down really quick, so that's nice. The copies that will take longer, or the moves, I should say, I'm gonna do copies and then deletions instead of just moving the files, just in case shit hits the fan. The stuff that's gonna take longer is when I'm rearranging these mechanical USB hard drives. Like, these are much, much slower. So basically, now that I'm moving stuff off of this portable SSD to this RAID, a lot of other stuff is gonna be rearranged on these other disks. And uh, I'm kind of just flying by the seat of my pants, whatever that really means, uh, trying to formulate a plan here. So hopefully it works. <laughs> hopefully it works. Famous last words on Crazy Ken, oh boy. You know, later today I realized I should really, you know, do some housekeeping and some cleaning and some rearranging of the office. So, you know, why not do that while the file transfer is going, right? <laughs> this kind of stuff inspires me to do other work that I would typically put off. It's like when the internet goes out, you all of a sudden get like bursts of motivation to do stuff you wouldn't normally do. Such is life. And it's just about done. Bingo. That is a good demonstration on how fast these Lossy discs actually are. Sweet, that took like 25 minutes to transfer, well, how big was it? 424 gigabytes of Final Cut Pro files. I will delete this. This is the Final Cut Pro archive file off of one of my mechanical disks. This contains archives of Final Cut Pro 10 libraries and archives of uh, older Final Cut Pro 10 files before the library system was introduced. So, I can run some fancy scripts and stuff later to try to remove space, or free up space and remove unneeded files. But for now, I'm just gonna transfer the whole thing. I'll do a copy and then a delete. Okay, we're looking at two terabytes reading from a mechanical USB 3 hard drive. This is gonna take a while. So I'm gonna rename this to Final Cut Pro. I'm just gonna call it archive. Copy, paste. And let's see what we get. Okay, so we started at about 16 hours and we jumped down to 14 hours pretty quickly. So I think it's still calculating the time, but yeah, it's gonna take a while. This is certainly gonna have to run overnight. I just hope it's done before I have to go to work and bring the laptop with me. <laughs> uh, maybe I should have ran this through my secondary computer. Hmm. Hang on, I just realized that's not really that smart. Um, I may have to move those files later if I run out of space on this Kenji hard drive, but I don't know. I maybe should have written my plan down. I had an idea in mind and I totally forgot what it was. Should have written it down. Whatever. Anyway, I need to think about what I need stored that needs to be read and written to and from fast. So what's important? Well, my client work, I would say, um, main three, which is the most recent archives, I guess you could say, and other files. So let's see, I think, uh, okay, we're looking at 833 gigabytes. We can move that stuff off of this mechanical disk. I think that makes a lot more sense because this stuff is more frequently touched. So let's move those 
I'll do a copy actually and then a delete and then we'll go from there. Okay, so instead of just suddenly eating up a third of the raid, which is what I was doing last time, that kind of sucked, I will eat up significantly less. And it won't take 16 hours, it'll take maybe about 5 or 6. So while this is running, I'm going to do other things and probably figure out how I should have these drives organized and cleaned up, because uh, I thought of a plan and forgot it. <laughs> so, yeah, if only there was some magical device where we can, like, write ideas on and remember them later paper. Well, we're still transferring off that slower disk. We got about an hour left. Yeah, at about 677 gigabytes there. So while transferring and reorganizing metaphorical files, I actually took this time to kind of do some housekeeping and clean up the room here and just get stuff nice and neat. And I actually came across a few relics like this old hard drive from one of our old videos and even this old computer clan iPod touch case. I also found 70 bucks. <laughs> uh, so it's pretty cool what you find when you take the time to clean, right? Yeah. Well guys, the initial setup is done. That file transfer is complete and the whole setup was really painless. I really recommend this product. It's fast, you can daisy chain it, you can put your own hard drives in there later. It's hardware raid. Like, what's not to love? <clears throat> but I'll tell you what, like I said earlier, it's important to have a backup, so next time, I'll be setting up the backup system for this raid, and we'll take it for a little bit more of a spin. That's coming up next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the not-too-distant future.